So let's move to the next step. So what we want to do then is solve the non-homogeneous problem for every eigenvalue. Right? We've, we've solved the homogeneous problem. We've gotten the, the eigenvalues out of that process. Now we need to go back and apply this. Uh, since we've come up with a bunch of lambda i's, we have to go back and do the same thing for the non-homogeneous problem. Okay, so here's our ODE. Right again, we're saying it's minus because this is a non-homogeneous direction. Uh, these are this is our eigencondition, and we've now solved used this to solve for our eigenvalues. So what's the solution to this ODE? Well, it's Sinch and Koch, right? Sinch and Koch times uh, some unknown constants, and we have i of those solutions, so we have to put the index i on. Okay, so same thing we did last time, Sinch and Koch. Oh, incidentally, um, in Maple. So let's say you get a solution and Maple gives you back a solution for this problem that's exponentials. Um, there's a function in Maple, I think it's called convert. I'll, I'll um, confirm this, but you write the expression, right? This is your, whatever the, the thing you wanna convert, like let's say this here was in terms of um, exponentials. So you'd write the expression there that you want to convert. And then there's different, um, there's different like keywords that you can use to convert from one thing to another. So we would convert this to trig. So you actually just write trig as it is there, no quotes or anything. And it'll take that exponentials and find an equivalent hyperbolic uh, formulation for it. Okay, so we have our, our hyperbolics um, ready to go here. Step five, determine the temperature of the solution for each eigenvalue. That means we're bringing everything back together. Okay, we bring back together uh, theta x, theta y, multiply them. This is our theta x here, sine. And then here's our theta y. We bring the, the unknown co uh, coefficients into the equation. So we are left with basically two sets of unknown coefficients, infinitely many of them. Uh, and then we assemble all the solutions, meaning all the i solutions become uh, or come together to form a single um, theta solution. Okay, so step seven is enforce the boundary conditions in the non-homogeneous. This is again gonna follow the, you know, pretty much the same procedure, except uh, we have a slight difference, which we need to go through. So let's, we're taking now the, the these two things. So we have uh, boundary condition one, boundary condition two in the y direction. And we need to enforce these, all right? So let's do binary condition one. So this becomes Q dot double prime is equal to minus K times the sum uh, from I equals one to infinity of sine lambda I X times C three. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Lambda I times cinch of lambda I times zero plus C four I lambda i cosh of lambda i zero, okay? Um, evaluate this out and it becomes q dot double prime is equal to minus k times the sum for i equals one to infinity of sine lambda i times x and c4 i times lambda i, okay? So again, now we're left in a situation where we have C4i unknown or uh, infinitely many of those unknowns. And we have this function of X appearing in this boundary condition. And now we should, you should have an idea where to go with this, right? We have a function of X. We need to get rid of that function of X in order to solve for the constants. How do we get rid of it? Use orthogonality. So we use orthogonality and we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by our um, eigenfunction which is orthogonal to this series. Okay, so to do that, we say uh, what? Q dot double prime times the integral from zero to W, X equals zero to W of sine lambda I times X DX. Okay, right, that was our, that's our uh, eigenfunction there is equal to minus K C four I lambda I integral from zero to W of on the right hand side, we have sine lambda x, so that becomes sine squared, sine squared of lambda i x dx. Okay, 
So we, we can uh, evaluate this, go to Maple or whatever, do the integrals. Well, you know, okay, sign the integral of that. We probably could know the integral of sine squared, but you come up with a, a, a determinate answer. It's a definite integral. We're gonna get an answer that's no longer a function of X. We've integrated away the X part of the equation. Okay, so let's just assume we, we do that. We apply the orthogonality, get our equation. Now we have an equation for every C4 I. Okay, but let's look back at our, our second boundary condition. Okay, um, sorry, I know I'm at 11, give me about 30 seconds here. So our second boundary condition is this up here, right? And if we enforce that, we end up with the following. So sum sine lambda i x c3 j uh, times cosh, I'm sorry, is that j it's i? c3 i times cosh lambda i times h plus c4 i cinch uh, lambda i times h. Uh, is equal to t h minus t infinity. So, okay, we have a problem, right? And our problem is we still have a function of x and now we have c3 appearing again, right? It just showed up again. So what you have to do again is apply orthogonality one more time. So we apply orthogonality um, and solve using that, uh, that new equation. Now we've got two equations, two sets of unknowns and we can solve both of them. 